Okay, so we are running first. Hi. Oh, thank you. So if you're kind of new to the Zoom stuff, most of you have used it before, but if you're new to it, just uh, if anything goes wrong, just shout out. If you can't hear me at any point, just shout out and let me know because sometimes the connection goes and sometimes the sound goes and sometimes I talk too fast. So if I talk too fast and you don't understand me, just, just let me know because sometimes I talk a little bit. But anyway, we'll get started. So we just start shoulder width apart and just very lightly start to kind of bounce the body a little bit on the vertical line. Uh, and just imagine you're kind of moving from the head. So you want the head to be kind of initiating the movement. And just to do a kind of full body check, just check in the whole body. So if you've got any kind of tension and maybe some injuries that you need to be kind of aware of in the whole class. I'm just trying to kind of fill the body with your feeling. Just start to feel the kind of heaviness of the body. We'll play a little bit with the arms and the hands. Keep the body going and just see if you can kind of feel the weight of the whole joint system in the arm. Play a little bit with the head looking up, looking down. Let's do a few kind of deep breaths through the chest. Nice deep breath in, feel the chest kind of expand. Nice deep breath out. And just kind of work your way down through the body, hips. And then feel the knees, should be nice and kind of springy. Should have a nice kind of bounce to them. Should feel quite soft. And then last, just go to the kind of contact with the feet on the ground. And just lastly, just start to kind of bring the body out of the ground fully. Really use the whole foot. So find that you kind of use the heel. Feel the arch of the foot as well. And press out the ball and the toes. Just try and feel the contact of the ground <clears throat> with the two feet. And just glue the feet to the ground. And I just want you to like kind of raise the body up and then drain down from it. Just if you're kind of raising up, you can also bring the hands out, hands up and out. And just drop the body down. So this is a kind of a pulse movement through the body. And just keep the contact with the ground, with the feet, very strong. Just a few, just let the body kind of run, drop into the ground. Um, just raise up a little bit, drop it down. Yeah. Okay, and then we'll just go to the front and back. Keep the feet as much as you can in this kind of relaxed, connected position with the ground. You start to kind of move now from the chest, forwards, backwards. And just let the head now to follow the, the movement of the chest. Feel free to kind of move the arms with it. And just notice what's happening in the feet as you bring the body back, as you bring the body forward. This direction is mainly, this is a frontal direction. And a lot of this direction is really about balance. So just notice the kind of balance shift forward, shifting back. And the main kind of feedback you'll get is probably in the feet that you'll kind of feel. The rest of the body is quite relaxed. You might feel the kind of toes start to want to kind of cling. You go back. You might feel, feel as you go back over the heels, the lower back starts to kind of tighten. So just notice it. And again, keep the breath going. And as much as possible, just so you can kind of release more and more of the body through the movement. And the best thing with kind of balance work is just listen to the body. Feel what's happening. 
You notice that the body's trying to stop itself from falling over. And just kind of explore the direction a little bit. And if you want to do a few where you really kind of feel that you need to take a step out and just take that, just kind of elongate that moment where you finally feel I need to move the body. And what you're, what you're basically feeling in, in a sense is, is the, the top of the body falling out of the base. So the whole, the whole part of the upper body can kind of tip out of the base, which is where the feet are. So you'll just feel that kind of, uh, uh, and then coming out of it. It can be very subtle, but you can make it kind of very obvious. Yeah, I'm just trying to feel if you can just take a step with it. Just like in that moment a little bit. Yeah, just a step out. Good. And then just play with the feet again, just kind of one foot in front of the other. Don't worry about how you place the feet and play with moving them, but again, just go to a kind of front back direction where the mood's kind of coming from the chest. So you'll feel now, or well, hopefully you'll feel a bigger range of motion, the movement. So you can bring the body back much more. You can bring the body forward much more. And just play with which foot for, but is forward. And just play with the positioning of the feet. So you can really change the range of motion depending on how you've got the feet placed. And just play with it, this kind of. Yeah, that's there. And again, just play with the chest movement. Yeah. If you're feeling quite flexible already, start to kind of, you can also bring the body down a little bit, touch the ground. Uh, to the back. Just try not to stress the spine too much. Too soon. Yeah. Good. And then just coming back to kind of side position and then just taking it this into a side to side move. Now again, feel you kind of shift the movement down and it's going to be in this kind of band around the <coughs> lower chest, the lower ribs, the diaphragm. And just feel that you kind of move the body from this area. Nice and light. And we don't tend to move this area in the day. We're kind of sat on our computer or driving or <clears throat> just sat down a lot. This movement, and even if we're active, we don't tend to use this movement so much. So really try and feel that you can start to Really fill this whole area with movement. And in this case, just start to really release the shoulders as well and the arms and feel that that movement from here is going to pass out both to the hips and to the shoulders and to the arms. So just start to feel a kind of connection between getting closer to the core of the body and what effect it has on the periphery. So the arms, hands, feet. And what you'll feel now with the feet is that you're going to shift all the weight onto one foot. So just play a little bit. And don't worry about centering the body or balancing the body. Just worry, just, just kind of think about sweeping the weight of the body across into one leg and then the other side. So you can really explore this if you feel again quite flexible. You can also start to bring the legs up and just, just feel what, the, what it feels like just to shift the whole weight onto one leg. Again, you can play with the arms. You can have the arms out to the side as if someone's kind of pulling you out. Just really play with it. And just again, listen to what's going on in the feet. You might feel a kind of tensing or tightening on the outer edge of the foot if you go over. Just kind of listen to it. And just do the same, but keep the feet down again and just practice kind of shifting the weight without actually lifting the leg. So you're just going to kind of shift over, shift over, shift over, and just make it a lot more flexible. So imagine like grass in the wind or, or a kind of soft bamboo, this kind of, this kind of feeling, or like seaweed, letting yeah. the sea, this kind of very, very soft movement. And 
just start to introduce a kind of slight rotation to the movement. So the hips now start to become, it's as if the hips get kind of dragged out by the body. Is it doing? No. It's as if you're kind of pulling the body out by the chest and the hips going to kind of follow. Very flexible. And what I want you to think about now is the foot at the back. What becomes the kind of back foot, just think about kind of peeling it out of the ground. So you've got the kind of full contact with the ground. And then just feel that you can kind of drag it out of the ground. Not fully, just so you're in the, so you're in the kind of toes. Da, 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 da. So you've got one foot that's very heavy, very grounded, full contact. And then you've got the other one, just, just, just getting kind of drawn out, dragged out. And just play with it. So you've got a slight sideways move, slight rotation. And this guy kind of idea of peeling the foot. Okay, just start to go to a very light rotation. So now the feet again kind of sealed into the ground. Very, very light. So you've got in this case like about a five five percent rotation, you're kind of five percent, uh, five degrees, five degrees, not five percent, five degrees. And then just feel what it, what's happening to the body. So very light. And now we're probably we're really all used to this kind of movement. So we're working with the hip area. In Japanese, it's kind of koshi, and koshi is really kind of this whole area, the lower back, hips, all this, this kind of belt. So everything that kind of runs sits around the belt area, <clears throat> where you would normally have the belt. This is the kind of koshi. And just be kind of, put all your focus in this area, and try and feel it as a kind of th really three-dimensional thing, not just as a kind of surface on the outer, but really try and feel the hips, what's actually going on inside. So you can also feel that you can put the hands on the body. Because sometimes if I've got a kind of dead area in the body where I don't kind of feel it, I kind of use the hands just as a kind of feeling thing, which is what they are, full of sensation. So if you place them on, you just get a little bit of feedback on what's kind of happening. And just so you can go kind of deeper and deeper into the, into the structure of this kind of mass. <clears throat> and the main thing to feel here is that the hips are actually kind of separate. So just start to feel now, play with the hips a little bit, that you can really manipulate them in a way which is not going to really affect the other one. Of course, the joint, but the hips, you can really manipulate them as if they were independent. So just play, open the rotation out a little bit more. And just really kind of fill that whole area with feeling. Feel free to move the hands as well. Yeah. And then just start to really increase, go to the maximum range. And just let the whole upper body relax onto the hips. So very centralized with the spine. Letting all the movement happen with the hips down to the feet. The arms very heavy, like big thick ropes, just kind of dangling off the body. And try and feel as much as possible the back of the body, but the spine all the way up to the top of the head. Try and feel this whole area. Really, again, kind of fill it with movement. A lot of the stuff we do in Aikido and, and life in general is in the front. It's in the front and everything goes to the front and I become quite small with. So to kind of get this feeling of being open, big, like a big mass, just get this sense that you're kind of rolling the movement from the back of the body. That's it, good. Just click it here, keep moving. Great. Very nice. Great, great, great. Good, and then the last movement in this case is, is really taking it just a bit lower, just underneath the hips, and this is really like the whole pelvis region, and especially the underside of the pelvis. So really try and make this movement deep into the pelvis, here and out. 
Now you can you can think about this route in a few ways. The easiest way I think is is like closing the body down and then opening it up. So just go basically in this one, just take these two extreme positions. So you really kind of close everything down, really let everything kind of come to the center, and then just feel that the center is going to release it and come to a full kind of open position. Arms outstretched, shoulder blades opening, head coming back. And then just release it back. Go to a kind of closed position. See just how much you can kind of close down with the body. And now again, I want and everything's kind of draw towards the center of the body. And then release it out. So just go through these two extreme positions. Let's give it a try. That's it. So you want the kind of maximum amount of closed, maximum kind of openness. And include everything in that. So the fingertips, the thumbs, the the knees, everything. Try and get as much as the body to kind of close and open. That's uh, very nice. Great. And again, just go back to the this first feeling, which is just fill the whole body. Check in with the whole body. Especially now you're really activating the spine, the hips, just kind of just everything. Nice, nice. That's uh, great. Very good. Yeah, and don't forget to breathe as well. So we sometimes forget to breathe. It's kind of stupid, but I do too. So it's really, really critical. So in this case, just go to a little bit of a wave pattern. So it's a very, it's the same exercise, just now very flexible. So coiling the body in, opening it out. And you can make this as smaller as big as you like. If you feel pretty connected and very flexible, start to really open it out. Just watch the spine to the back. You don't want to kind of put yourself in a really uncomfortable position. But let the whole body open and close. Just pay really attention to the knees now. The spine's hopefully quite flexible. Just watch that the knees don't kind of lock out as you do these movements. But all the time, keep a sense of balance in the knees. There we go. And just emphasize a little bit now, kind of drop through the body. So you're going to kind of, as you close the body down, feel that you kind of sink the weight down through the ground, and then you're going to spring it out as you open. So you've got to kind of impact into the ground, and then and out. So just feel it's a little bit like being on a roller coaster. You've got this kind of, and then opening it out. And then you just want to kind of join that wave. If you go down, up, down, hold that. And just make it as big as you like. So you can also start to bring the hands back to the ground. Open oh, out to the back. Yeah, let's really kind of play with it. Really good exercise for the spine. There we go. Nice. Great. There we go. Okay, and then we just do a few stretches for the body. So we'll do about eight or 10, just depending on the speed of it. But you're just going to stretch up, really breathe in through the nose, nice deep breath. Stretch right up, extend through the back of the knee, and then go down, you can start to breathe out through the mouth. Keep the length in the spine and just really slowly on the first one, all the way down, bending the knees, bending the knees, reaching down into the ground with the hands, pull the breath out. <laughs> And then just feel again, you can draw back to the center with the body and then start to kind of curl back up. Now allow the spine to do a very similar movement. So it's going to curl, 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 curl. And then it's going to start to uncurl as you come up. Follow the breath, let the breath in, bring the hands up as deep as you can. And then lengthen, lengthen, lengthen all the way down, breathing out. And just let the breath fall out of the body. Just going to kind of, you're just going to release it. So don't kind of force it out. Just let it out kind of naturally. And just repeat it. As you get more into it, you probably want to make it a little bit more flexible. So just go at your own speed, follow your own breath. 
breathing in deeply, breathing out deeply. And the breath out should be a little bit like when you get a puncture in a car or, or a bike tire. It's a kind of just let it out naturally with the movement as the pressure comes from the body. That's it. That's Michael, as you go down, are you bending the knees? Yeah, keep the knees bent. Yeah, keep the knees bent all the way until you start to kind of feel that the, the spine's going to start to draw up. Yeah, so yeah. As much as you need to keep the knees bent, yeah. Thank you. That's uh, great. The main thing in this exercise is actually the length through the, through the upper body. So lengthening the spine, length through the arms, and the knees... I bend just as much as I need to keep that. That's it, nice. Great. Okay, just one more round, don't rush. Come back up to, to the vertical in your own time. As soon as you come back up, we'll just go to the next one. Just take your time with it. Okay, good. And then I'll explain the next one if you've got into it. This one's the side stretch, so you're gonna do the same thing. Keep the feet down. Really good, breathe in, stretch up one side, and then just let the body kind of fall over. And again, let the breath out as you do itself. Keep the length, the key thing in this one is, is maintaining the length through the sides of the body. And that's both sides up. Just, again, keep the knees flexible. You'll probably find the back, the, the opposite foot comes out of the ground as you do it. So just that. You can take it nice and slow. And as you come out of this, just let the body go all the way. You get back to the center. So don't kind of get to this position and then draw the body back. What I want you to feel is like the body getting dragged out, dragged out, dragged out, dragged out, dragged out, dragged out and then just let it go. And then we're just gonna to go to the other side. So stretch up, really lengthen, breathe in. Hold this aside, let the breath out. Lengthen, lengthen, lengthen this whole side. And just let it out. And then come back. Uh, four on each side. Really nice big stretch for the whole side line of the body. And you probably feel you want to make it a bit more dynamic as you get into it. Just let it go. Breath maybe becomes a little bit more active. And again, the main things are kind of length through the whole body. It's not really about flexibility, how far you can go. It's about how much length I can create in the body. Okay, we'll do one last one. This is kind of a little bit lower. You're going to go wide with the legs. I'll just show it. Some of you have probably done this before. You're going to go with the hands like this. You're going to stretch down like you're sitting into a kind of false stance. Keep the back long, but don't necessarily worry about it being so straight. So keep the, just keep the back long. Sit down into the posture, come to here. And then you're going to stretch. And then you're going to really straighten the knees. So this is really for the lower body. You're going to straighten the knees, draw the arms out here to this position. And then what, all I want you to do is just release it down to the ground. And then again, just draw the body up. So come up to a neutral position. You see breathing at this point, sink down. Press the palms together. Really release the shoulders out to the side. Sink, sink, sink down. And as you go, just breathe out. Pull the arms forward. Sink the knees back to so the hips. All the lower body's moving back and the hands are going forward. Stretch the spine as long as you can. Pull the knees back as if someone's behind you pulling the hips. And then when you feel the kind of maximum tension, just release it, bend the knees, let the hands drop to the ground. 
<clears throat> if you need to, you might feel you want to shift the weight onto the hands a little bit. That's also okay. And then just come back up. You can make this one a bit longer, but we'll do it kind of short one. So just breathe in, sink down. We feel a length through the spine, width through the shoulders. And then again, just start to press the hands out, pull the hips back, stretch through the legs, the knees, pull forward. Feel the body kind of splitting, separating. Lengthening. Actually, release it all the way down. We'll just do about four of these. This is a bit deeper stretch, so. And then down, sink into the stance as much as you can. And then stretch, pull the body apart. Lengthen, lengthen, lengthen. Straight through the spine. You might feel a shake in the back of the knees. This is also okay. Pull, release. And I'll just do one more. Thank you. Sink. Nice deep breath in. Pull out. Just be pulled back through the knees. Hold it a little bit. And release it down to the ground. Okay, and you, this, you can just shift the weight a little bit onto the hands. And now I want to just walk the feet towards together. You've got the hands, the feet together. Just that. And just the last thing, just feel the whole weight of the body drop down. So the upper body should feel very relaxed. And the upper body quite full. And just spend a few moments, just a few deep breaths. A little bit with the spine. Bend the knees as much as you need to. And just kind of enjoy the feeling of the upper body releasing all the way to the ground. As much as you can release the shoulders, the neck, the whole upper region of the body. Just feel it getting drawn down to the ground. Just play a little bit the last time, just passing a wave through the spine. So with the contact with the hands, you know, see if you can kind of pass a very light wave through the whole spine that passes out the head and it passes out into the fingertips. And what I want to do is keep that spinal wave, let the arms start to come out of the ground, very light contact, and just feel that you kind of Draw the body back up with this kind of wave. Just all the way back up to a vertical. Take it, take your time with it, and really breathe as you do it. Just feel the body kind of getting drawn out, drawn up, drawn up, drawn up, drawn up. Very slow, just in your own time. Just until you get back to a vertical. Really in your own time, don't rush it. And if you get back to the vertical kind of early, just start to kind of shift the body and then around just kind of play with the body a little bit that's it nice <laughs> nice nice there we go. Good. okay so we're, we're going to focus to this this week mostly on walking work and, and on cutting so this one exercise is, is one of my favorites for, for the body work and it's just this kind of swing so we, we've probably all done this one before but just imagine you're going to drop draw the arms up the key thing is that i'm going to drop into the from the from the hip through the knee into the toe. So you're just going to swing the arms up, swing them down, swing them up, swing them down. So this is a much more dynamic exercise now. And just feel it again, the, the weight dropping down and it's going to kind of fall into the structure of the body. So I want you to really focus on the lower body, even though the arms are very active in this. Really focus on the lower body being heavy and really receiving the upper body. So the whole structure is going to fall into itself. Boom. And you're going to do it with a sense of length, width, and breadth. You're going to kind of fill the whole body. Just let it drop right into the base. Also keep the breath going. Make it as dynamic as you need to. That's it. And just be really mindful now about the knees. You shouldn't feel any kind of stress in the knee or any kind of Ah, any kind of pain shooting through the knee. There we go. That's it. Nice, Keith. Great. Very nice. 
And this is an exercise, I would do this usually in like a minute or two in the, in the classes. I'd, I would do this for like 15, 20 minutes. This is a really great exercise that you can really get into very deeply. So if you're, if you're kind of wondering what to do at home at any point, this is a great exercise to do. 10, 20 minutes, really nice. There we go. <laughs> nice. Nice. Okay. So I really relate this to the sword work. So what I want to just focus a little bit on is the head. So as you as your vision in this, and something I was focusing on last week with the classes, and also on Saturday, is this kind of peripheral awareness of the body. So one of the things we focus on in, in kind of Japanese martial arts, especially, is the idea that I'm constantly kind of aware of the whole space. So that the, the peripheral vision is constantly kind of active in a way. Now, if at, at some point during this exercise, I kind of drop the head, then I'm aware of this space, but I've lost all this space. So just imagine you can basically keep as, as wide a view on, on your room or wherever you are, mostly really rooms. So you're going to just have the sense that you're really wide awake and wide awake of the whole room. So you've got a, a sense of the whole space. And just know, just also play with dropping the vision. So you kind of drop, look to the feet and just feel what happens. In my case, I kind of lose all the ceiling. All this space disappears. So just, just, it sounds a bit obvious. But just see as much as you can. See if you can see if you can basically fill and feel the whole room as you do it. And you're not focusing on anything particular. You just want to kind of sense the whole space. There we go. And just feel what difference that makes between being here and being here. Nice. That's it, very nice. Nice. Very right. Very nice. Okay. Now, I want you to focus on, on, on the same exercise, just a little bit of a shift. So we did, we did beef, when we started this, this kind of movement and then letting the feet settle and having the feeling kind of impacting the body down. So try and catch that same feeling where I went through is raise up and then feel that you kind of impact the ground with the body. So this is now a sense of bump into the ground and just for now, let it kind of sit into the ground. So I want you to raise up, don't swing back up, just let the body drop down and just feel the effect of the body. I want you to really feel the balance in the body as you do it. So focus on kind of impacting the ground and just feel where the body is at the end of it. Notice whether you're to the front, maybe holding to the back, or it's quite possible going to one side. So just notice it and feel that you can more and more each time feel that you hit the center of the body. And it's if I want to take the center of the body and press it right into the base. So it's got a really clear kind of impact. Boom. Just let the arms go with the movement. Boom. You can think about kind of holding something heavy above the head and slamming it into the ground. So this kind of work. And then picking it back up. But kind of have a very clear sense of impacting the whole ground with the body. That's it. Nice. But these loosening exercises are great. They, they can really loosen through the whole body and the joints. So the problem is that I, is, is in a way I don't, I don't want to maintain that looseness all the time. So think about a relaxed body, but also think about an engaged body. So in this case, I'm, I'm kind of actively doing something. So. I don't want to do it with tension and kind of hold the body, but I do want to have a sense that I'm kind of engaging the whole body in the movement. So that the feeling's like, oh, yes, rather than a sense of kind of rhythm, which is kind of loose. So try and try and keep the flexibility and suppleness from these loosening exercises, but try and engage the body basically in a kind of structure now. So you're going to kind of oh. let the body fall into the structure. So what I want to do, which will kind of help that is if you think about this kind of tiny Henko position, 
where the hands are down, this kind of position. This is basically a sim simulation of a cut as well. So what I want you to do is come to here, and then as if you kind of impact your arms down into the ground. You can do that both sides and just feel that the body goes boom. Into the so it's as if the hands hit the hips, boom, and then raise it back up. And then again, impact the whole body down, and then back up. And you can use the breath as well. There. And just again, feel the body. Now I don't want to come into a structure of tension. I want to keep the relaxation and the body should be quite loose, quite uh, flexible. Loose is the wrong word, quite flexible. But it should also feel really, I should feel also really engaged with the whole body. The whole body should feel kind of lit up. Bang! And then back up. Bang! Back up. So you should feel really big, heavy. But also as relaxed as possible. That's it. And if you do this in a way which is which is relaxed and heavy, you'll feel a kind of reverb goes through the body. So you'll feel a kind of boom from the center. Boom. The center will kind of boom, 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 boom. That's it. And I don't want to kind of make that happen. I just want to let it happen and then kind of listen to it. So just get the center. Boom. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. So you're you're impacting the ground, but the ground you're also receiving the ground back. So if you think about any kind of force, you're also receiving something back. So basically, you want to you don't want to block that force back. You want to let it run through the body. So just play. The easiest way to feel this is just do a few really tense. So I go to this and I go like this. Now if I go tense, I feel the whole body's like a lock. If you think about things passing up and or or a system like a water system, it's, if I use tension like this, it's like just putting a cap on the system. The thing will flow back. So. Just do a few where you really feel like I just go full tension. And I feel nothing from the ground. I just feel like I'm on the ground, like a robot. And then just do a few where you can really feel that you release the body. And there's a real sense of feedback through the body. It's so totally clear. So just play a few, go in and out of tension, holding the body, and then let it go. But really do the let go through a, through a very clear structure. It's a really different feel. That's it. Good. Great. And just one more point about this. It's, it's almost inevitable. Everything's in the front. So everything can tend to start to go, go into the front of the body. So again, just imagine, be really aware of the spine, the back of the neck, the top of the head. And just get the sense that this whole structure is engaged this way. So just think about the, the, the movements actually going to be pressed from the back of the body. I think about gathering into the spine and then pressing the movement out. So just play a little bit with the hands now. You can be up, you can be back, like this kind of engaged position. You're going to always finish in the same position this way. But just come to it from a different place. You can also have the hands down to the side. And just feel that you engage hips. Press the back of the body kind of forward. So that whole movement forward is actually coming from the rear. It's like your whole engine is in the back. You're like a, really a car with the engines right at the back. It's kind of underneath and at the back. Just play with it a little bit. And shoot a different position from the start. There we go. That's it, nice, nice, nice. And just make it as dynamic as you as you as you like. Ah, okay, good. Ah, okay. Just watch one. There's, well, there's one technical point in this, which is the handwork. So if I think of this like sword work, I will sometimes get into this this kind of position. What I want to think when you do this position is that the, the hands are basically kind of shoulder width, so a little bit wider than hip width. So I don't in this exercise want to go to this. What I want to do in this exercise is go a little bit wider that way. So that the hands, if I look on the screen, are like wider than the hips, but they're about, what I'm trying to do is widen the shoulders, and that. So if you think about this kind of tiny ankle position, which is really common in our style, it's like this kind of position. So just, just use a little bit, just play also now with width through the body. Obviously you can be too wide and too dispersed, and I can be too narrow and too close. So think about something which is expanded and open, and this kind of position. So there's a kind of line which runs down from the shoulder, elbow, fingertips. This. Yeah. Or, 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 or,
Bearing in mind, Michael, that most of the women will have hips wider than their shoulders. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Always listen to your own body. I know nothing about women, so. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> ah. Okay. Okay, one last point. This is this is really not technical. This is kind of energetic. So when you do this, I want you to feel like a, you've got a rock and you're in a pond of water and you're going to drop the rock into a pond of water and you're going to get ripples that come out. Now, what we tend to do with this kind of exercise is, is imagine the impact's going to be in the hands like this. And what happens, it pulls the whole body out. So I want you to really feel like the, if you're dropping a rock into a pool, you just drop it straight down. So there's a dump like this. And then that ripple is going to come out into the hands. So there's a dump. Da, 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 da. So just feel like now, now the center takes all the, all the control. So the center does the whole movement and it passes out into the hands. And again, just experiment with, I do the move with the hands, with the hands, with the hands, or I do it come with the hips in the center. All done. Again, just experiment with it. It's the best way to kind of feel it. That's it. And the closer you get to kind of hitting the center, the more you will kind of ripple out. So the more you will feel the kind of the, the movement pass through the whole structure. And not only you want it to pass to the hands, you want it to go out the feet as well. So imagine that the, the stone's gonna, imagine the stone's gonna hit the surface of the water at the hip level. It's gonna bump. So you also get ripples down through the water. That's it. Very nice, very nice. Okay, take a bucket. We submarine. Fresh oil and cane pocket comes in now. Okay, so. And this really comes back to the, the idea with this with the weapon work or when we when we train weapons, we're actually training the body work. So we're not kind of learning a sword system or we're not kind of learning a staff system. We're actually always training the body work. So the 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 intention behind the weapon work is really to train the body. So all these kind of movements are now going to be the same. What I want to do is just start with the first suburi. So the right foot's forward. You're just going to draw to the back, draw the back to the back with the sword, pull the leg back, and then just drop into the kamai. Leg comes forward, and I parallel position with the ground. Just uh, in your own time. Nice, big, clear movements. Reaching the back, engaging the hips. I just want to focus on one thing. So, and that's that's really the best word in English is like stability. So to be stable. What I what I don't want to do in terms of the weapon work, in, in this case, the first of is a really great exercise for stability of the hips. So what I want to focus on is like as I go to this position, I should feel really stable. So I should be totally comfortable in the back foot. And then I should just feel again, like I shift the weight forward and I'm totally stable with the feet. So you can think about calmness in the footwork, or you can just think about being stable. Now, it's not that I don't want to shift the feet or don't want to move the body. It's that I don't need to. So I'm trying to eliminate a lot of inessential movements in this case. So just from the Kamai feeling, you really connect to the ground, shift the weight back, really feel very comfortable at this position, and then drop in. Just see if you can basically keep this kind of stability, relaxed Kamai and position. Um. Um. 
And the first supra is a really great exercise for kind of eliminating unnecessary movement of the body. Awesome. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Great. Very good. Nice, nice. Good. So we're, we're kind of human. So what we tend to do is focus on the thing that's, that's happening in front of us. So the thing that's right in front of me, which is a cut, which I'm kind of making happen. I start to kind of focus on it. Everything starts to draw into it. But what I want you to do now, just as an exercise, is just feel that you can just swing through with the cut. Now again, just really feel the whole body as you do it. So come to the back and then just imagine you engage the hip run into the ground. And just do as little as you need to with the sword. So basically all I'm trying to do is join the arc of the sword. So the, the sword is gonna arc through the space in front of me. And I just wanna let the body engage with that. There. So really a lot like when we do the swinging exercise from here. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Just let the sword swing through. Engage it to the back and then uh -huh. To the brain. There we go. Nice, nice, nice. Good. So another kind of mistake we can kind of make in this is to push, push the weapon. So what can happen a lot is like I get to the back and then I push the movement out from the back foot. So there's a sense of kind of uh, out. Now, it's not that there isn't a forward movement, but the, the movement's basically a fall, a falling through the structure down. So I'm really focused in this case as I'm here, draining the feeling down through the body. So don't think about pushing the sword out, but just think about dropping down through the structure. Now, because I'm coming into a hand me position with the front foot, because the front foot is falling forward, I'm going to naturally, the body's naturally going to, going to press forward in this space, but I'm not going to do it by pushing out of the back foot to do it. I know this is kind of common in, in, in a lot of athletics, but in this case, what you're doing is something else. You're going to kind of just drop through the system. So just get the sense that the back foot is the root of the, the cut, and you're just going to fall into it. Now, because you're drawing the front foot forward, you are going to naturally, the body's naturally going to find its way forward, but I don't want to do it by pushing. So the first super is about also changing my relationship to the ground and how I use the ground. I either push myself out of it or I drain the weight through it. So it's about a kind of compression down rather than a pushing out. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Nice. And you'll get a cut which is much more stable because you're not basically pushing yourself out of your own system. You're just going to fall into your own system. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Nice, nice, nice. And again, the best way is explore it. So actually push yourself out of the body from the back foot. Just, just feel what it's like to actually push yourself from the back foot. Just so you've got a very clear distinction between pushing and compressing through the structure. That's it. Good. And it's also very useful if you go to teaching, or if you, some of you are teachers, to be able to demonstrate the kind of thing you don't want people to do. This is a very, really useful skill to be able to imitate people and be able to, to, to show what you don't want. This is a really, really, really great skill. One of the best for teaching. And one of the hardest things to learn. Really, really difficult. And then just come back into the sword cut. So come into here. And again, just really put all the priority on the hips. 
So I know everything goes out to the sword. It's natural. The hands want to take over. Everything goes to the sword work. But just get a feeling for now, you're going to really ground the hips down and feel the cut is basically placed into that structure. We're going to keep it nice and low. Feel that the sword just slots into the structure. Bam. Focus is really all in the hip work, center of the body, and grounding the movement out through the feet. Try and make it as easy as possible whilst fully engaging with the cut. There we go. That's so nice. So we'll just stick with the first of I just want you to do one exercise, which it's about really finding the base. So a lot, a lot of the problems we encounter with, with Aikido work or, or life in general is, is, is losing the base, which is basically where you fall out of balance. So the upper body is basically getting drawn out from the, from the lower body. And this happens all the time. My phone rings and I do this huh, to try and answer it. Rather than kind of being balanced, grounded, centered, I lose all those kind of qualities to get the phone because it's really. But just have the sense now that you're going to fall into the base all the time. So Aikido is a really great practice for centering the body and finding the base and really trying to keep it. So just play with the Kamai like this and just play with moving the body around. It can be very, very small step. It's not about the, the kind of movement. It's just about trying to find the center of the body and really where the base is. So just find all the time that you fall into the middle of the feet. And just be hypersensitive to what's happening in the, foot, in the feet. Let the hands do what they're doing. They're just going to kind of float in front of the body with the sword. And just focusing on the feet. And try and feel like you use the feet like you would use the hands in the ground. So you're really going to kind of feel with the feet. Explore the foot fully. The toes, the ball of the foot, the arch, the blades of the foot, the heel. Really explore the whole foot. I'm going to go back to this thing we talked about that I said at the beginning, which is about kind of peeling the feet from the ground. So really feel that you very, very softly just explore the footwork. That's it. And the sword probably doesn't feel so heavy. And it's probably not too heavy, but it's a constant challenge to the base. Even when it's inactive, this, if, you, if you were to just drop the sword, it will pull the body forward. So just feel all the time that the sword's not going to affect the balance. It's just kind of floating in front of you and you're connecting with the grip, but you're not kind of leaning into the sword. And I'm also not trying to resist the weight of the sword either. So I'm not kind of bracing the back to do it. I'm just going to kind of let it fall into the structure. Okay, so just, I want to be as light as possible in the upper body. Heavy, grounded in the lower body. There we go. Yeah, and if you feel kind of pretty connected, just start to explore the movement more. Move through the space. Use the kind of turning movements as well. Just challenge the ability to find the base. And basically maintain the middle of the posture all the time. There we go. Great. That's it. Nice. And again, quite easy now to lose the movements into the front. So again, be really aware of the back of the body, the spine, the neck, the crown of the head. Feel that whole space of the body kind of pressing the movement forward. 
It's as if the, the front of the movement, the frontal movement is really being motivated from the back of the body. And that's true whether you turn, whether you advance, whether you come back. And that's So last couple of minutes, I just wanted to play with the first suburb, just keeping the right side forward. So again, just keep to this movement, keep moving around. And then when you feel the kind of urge to kind of make a cut, just find the base, find the back, make the cut, and then just come back into movement. So I want you to feel again, a kind of flexible feeling here. And then when you feel like it, just ground the back foot, find the back, make the cut. And try and make it as relaxed as possible, but also really feel that you're engaging into the cup. So it should feel full, full of feeling. The cup should be really engaged. Yeah. You've got this now change of state between something very loose, very flexible, very mobile. And then I'm going to really engage into a position. Very grounded. I just want you to change the cut. So what you're going to do now is rather than finding the back, cutting down, you're just going to go directly from the back foot. So I want you to feel the back foot's grounded and I want you to really press the body forward. So you're just going to do this, this way. Now I don't want you to worry about finding the back this time. So it's a much shorter cut. Just find the top of the head and cut the body down. So just do a few where you get used to it. Just this slightly different dynamic now. It works on the same principle of grounding through the back foot, compressing the structure. We just feel now that the body gets drawn forward and straight into the cup. So it's a much more aggressive cup and it's a much more practical cup. So the first suburb is really an exercise. It's not a practical way of cutting. And this is a very direct showman, drawing the whole body forward into it. Just give that a try. That's it. That's it. Oh, good, good, good. Very nice. And just notice one thing, this is also really common. You shift your technique and you lose all the stuff we did before. So I do this all the time. So this is why you can kind of, ah. So what I want you to feel is just watch this. I push out of the body. I lose the balance forward. Or I push out of the back leg. And then the body falls forward like this. So really make a distinction now between pushing out of the back leg and sticking into it. So don't worry so much about how far you go forward, but worry about how you do it, which basically I need to do balance. So really think about compressing the structure behind you. This, and the feelings like the whole structure from the back and the ground goes forward into the space, rather than I get pulled out with it. So whilst you do them really balance, and really with the sense of a compressive structure, it's much heavier much more effective and much more efficient. Yeah, that's the last few cuts. Just play the last, last, last cuts. Just really feel that you can go from a position of stillness, as still and as calm as you can, and then find the movement and then come back. So move around the space a little bit if you need to, but just find that you get to a position which is very calm, very settled. And if I don't feel that I can kind of just go into the movement, find another position. 
there. When you feel fully engaged, fully kind of confident, boom, just press the whole body forward. Just the last three or four cuts. Really ground the body nice and calm. And you're going from stillness into direct movement. Boom. So it's more about the kind of intention than the cut. as clean as possible in that movement. Still, and then bam, straight in. That's it, Adrian, good. Okay, good, we will stop there. We will end on day one. Very good. Michael. That was that. Thanks a lot, Michael. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. You can go back to bed now as well if you like. <laughs>